So I'm on a bit of a roll this week and I've got a bit of motivation behind me. So I figured whilst this new book has landed on my doorstep, we would start colouring inside it. So I have picked a page out and it is this seahorse. I've got a little thing for colouring seahorses. Uh, I recently did one um, that had lots of white and black Posca pen dotting detailing on and I loved that one. But this one I'm going to make sort of coral and pink type colours, I think. A um, little bit of yellow around his belly and under his chin to um, be a shine from this little lamp here that's going to be a light source. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be a fun one. There's quite a lot of background area on this one, so I'm going to go in with the background first. Now, when I go in with the background, I'm going to use Distress Inks today and it will go over some of the illustration. But the colours that I'm using are all sort of colours and tones that I'll be using round here because these coming off the top of it, I don't know if you can see, but they're little crystals and I'm going to do them nice and colourful, like lots of different colourful crystals. So my distress inks that are possibly going to go all over here while I'm doing the background, it doesn't matter, we can go over it with pencil, so I'm not worried about anything like that at the moment. So I'm going to put a scrap piece of paper just underneath. I think this one's a really beautiful one. I think I've picked out about six pages that I like in this book, but to be honest, some of them, well, a lot of them really aren't my cup of tea. Um, there was one that I really didn't like. I don't, I don't want to be down about it, but there was one that just looked, you know, it looked odd. It didn't look like Hannah Carlson's style. Oh, that's the back of a, a Mr. Kurt Mirror's page that I printed. Yeah, there's one page in here, it didn't look like, Hannah Carlson's style at all and it looked really, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. Um, where will it be now? Watch me not be able to find it. But it's in the back of the book, isn't it? That one. It just, I don't know. There's not much to it. There's not much about it and it doesn't look like her style. It, is, it, it did confuse me that page a little bit. But there we go. And also this one. I don't know, is that a dragonfly and are they water based? Because that's the only water based thing I could think that could possibly be about this page. And I thought, hmm, how is it watery? But there we go. But we're doing this one today, so where's my scrap piece of paper? Wipe that back underneath. Stop complaining, Kirsty. Right, so I'm using these little brushes today to blend with. I'm going to put three different colours and mix them all together on the page for the background. So I've picked out Milled Lavender, I've got Shabby Shutters and I've, I don't know if I'm going to use this but I've picked it out just in case I decide I want to pop a little bit around the edges and it's Evergreen Burra, Bow, but who knows, but that one. Um, so I think I'll go in and mix these two first. I'll have them both opened up at the same time because I'm going to try and blend them into each other. But if it doesn't work and it looks really terrible, then I'm going to do the water effect over the top anyway, where I splash water on and then lift it off with a towel. Um, and I've always got, if it looks totally dreadful, I've always got my trusty watercolour metallic paints to splash over the top and hide any disasters. So that's my plan, <laughs> my plan A and my plan B. So we'll go in with the lightest shade first. I think we'll go in with the green, the green shabby shutters. I think, and you just want to rub your brush all along it. Um, now, if you don't want to go directly onto the page, because sometimes it can put, if you've got a really juicy distress ink, it can really put a harsh line down on the page, which a lot of people don't want. But if you want to just rub off on your, paper first see mine aren't very juicy so i'm i think i'm safe to just go straight from the pad to the paper because really i need some new ones but it does come out it does come out to be honest i'm glad that these ones aren't really juicy because i had i don't really have a lot of faith in the paper um with distressing i don't know if it was these books these series of books Oh, a different book. I was using a really, really juicy distress, distress oxide, it was. And it actually bled through to the opposite page. So it scared me a little bit. 
And I was like, cool. Well, I wonder what that's going to be like in this week. But see, I'm going to go around this lamp because I figured that this colour will act as a nice base for the light source as well. So I can still go over the top with a yellow pencil over this. Um, but I think it will just be nice to just get that bit of a glow around there. And I am going to add, of course, that other colour. What was it? Milled lavender. I'm going to add some of that in shortly. But yeah, I think to get some of that down around there where I'm going to have the glow will be quite nice. So... Yeah, they're not juicy at all, mine. I know you can refresh them and things, but I'm lazy. I can't be bothered buying the stuff and doing it, if I'm honest. Um, I don't know if I can come down a bit more, but I don't... They look very far away, but it's the... Because I'm doing a background, you want the whole page in frame, don't you? If the water effect doesn't work as well as I want it to either, I will just get my watercolour metallic paints out anyway for a splash of colour. I think because sometimes, you know, when you use a light coloured distress ink, the water effect doesn't always show up and work as well as if you use a more vibrant distress ink, vibrant bold distress ink, do you know what I mean? Right, let's get some of this in the bottom corner, I think. don't like that line that's been created there. I wonder if I can get rid of that a little bit. Try and put a deeper covering on. Oh, not in frame now, see. I like these pages though, it was a toss up between me doing this page and there's a really lovely shell page, is it a shell? It's some sort of shell anyway or something, <laughs> some sort of thing, I don't know what it is but it looks nice. Right, I'm going to bring in some of the other colour now, so I'm going to switch out this brush for this one so it's got the colour that I'm using on it and this is Milled Lavender. So let's get some of this lovely colour down now. So we'll start, yeah, we'll start here at the side of that. So they're quite subtle, these colours. Now this will look nice as well against the colours that I'm going to use for the actual seahorse and the, the crystals that I'm doing as well. Hopefully it's all going to come together nicely in the end. <laughs> And we can blend this colour into that one and it might create a bit of a separate colour there. The edging I'll probably either use a glitter gel pen, you know this little border, either a glitter gel pen or one of my mat metallic watercolours. But that'll be like right at the end I'll bother doing that bit. colour in between all those crystals this is what I meant about going over it but the pencil will cover that so none of that matters also when you're doing this be careful not to you know press down on the ink with your finger because this the moisture from your fingers will lift the pigment as well, if you're not careful. Let's get in between those, whatever that is. It's like a little fin, isn't it? <laughs> don't know if it's called a fin on a seahorse, but there we go. It is now. I want some more green around there. I'm going to leave that little space there for some more green, I think, and come down here. Work my way down here with this purple tone. Let's 
switch hands. I'm a bit amb ambidextrous sometimes. <laughs> I really am. I said I'm one of them people that, you know, writes with the left hand but sort of uses scissors with the right hand and everything else. Like if I'm throwing a ball or if I'm opening something or if I'm picking a child up, it's always my right arm that's the strongest. It's strange but I'm left handed for writing. <laughs> it's quite time consuming this to be honest when you've got really dry inks because it you know it takes a while to build up the coverage but hopefully it'll be worth it it'll look quite magical and mystical I'm still in fray Manta Frame. Well done, Kirsty. <laughs> yeah, I've been trying to be a bit more regular on YouTube because, you know, with five kids, it's hard. It's hard to be have a regular schedule or anything, but I'm just trying to upload more if I can, if and when I can. So, obviously, they've gone back to school now, so I do have a little bit more time than I have done in the, in the last six weeks, shall we say. So that's why you'll be seeing more videos pop up from me. Let's get that. Now I'm just looking at this lantern here and I'm trying to, trying to decide because it would be I'm looking at it, I think it would be like one of these glass lanterns where you can see like behind it so it's see-through so I think just behind this candle would be the distress ink that I'm using so I'm just gonna, gonna try and get a little bit in not much but just so it's not stuck out like a sore thumb there's me forgetting that area so I'll pop a bit of the green colour as well up there in a second Right, let's pull you down a bit. I want to get some of this purple in here. Get some there. Come on, distressing. Give me some more. Give me some more colour. I have loads what have just completely dried up now. I'm going to go through them afterwards actually and get a shot of the ones that are totally ruined. Because I've got quite a few. And I keep pulling them out thinking, oh, that's a nice colour. And then I'm like, oh no, it's the one that's totally died on me. Let's get in there. I think I've just this top corner to do in the purple now and then I'm going to take that green into that little space that I left out where I wanted the green. It's not for giving me much off this now at all. It's saying I quit. Anybody else find this with the rinks? Like, I don't think, I think I've only had one juicy distress ink. Well, it weren't even distress ink, it was distress oxide. And the rest, but the, the minis that I have, I'm wondering if the full size ones are better than these. The minis just, they just seem to dry up really quickly. Like, really quickly. Right, anywhere else I want to top up on this? I think I want to get at the sides here a bit better right. let's just get some of that green now so going back to shabby shutters for this little corner here shabby shutters i like green and purple together there's something about it i think it looks really nice Get a bit 
in this corner. Am I still in frame? I'll adjust. <laughs> in here I'm just trying to fill out the spaces now make sure we've not got any white space left go over it all little bit in there there's a bit of a gap there isn't there see that little white space there let's really get in with that and a bit right at the top I'm gonna bring you down but make a little area here yeah. It is almost time for our water. Now, it might not work very well given that we've only used light colours, but we'll see. If it doesn't work very well, I'll get some metallic paint on it. But literally, I'll show you what I'm doing. You've probably seen it a thousand times been done this, but just in case you're a newbie, where's my towel? Oh, so I've just got a old dishcloth tea towel. Um, I've got some water in my little jar, my very mucky kiln the jar what I use for my painting. This is fab to use for a little jar though of water. Um, an old paintbrush. So I'm just going to load my paintbrush up with water. And then I'm literally going to tap water onto the page. And where the water lands, it'll lift up the pigment so that we're left with white areas on the page or you should do now it doesn't always work when you've got lighter distressing colors so you know it might not work fabulous this i'm just warning you it might not work but basically once you put the color down you leave it for a couple of minutes and then you lift it off with your towel so you do have to give it a few minutes just to work its little magic Let's have a look down here, see if we can get anything going on down here. But some colours just don't work very well with this. I think it was, was it a yellow I used? Distress ink and this effect didn't work at all on the yellow. There. Right, we'll leave it at that and give it a couple of minutes. But can you see where, I've, you can see there on camera, can't you, where I've splashed the colour on? Whether you can see anything happening yet. I don't know, but I will give it a couple of minutes. You can just see up here, actually, if I lift it up gently, you can just see here where it's lifted the pigment. Well, there's something on my page there. What if I, I bet that's my nail varnish, you know. I wonder if I can erase that. <laughs> I'm always putting marks on my pages. Let's see if it'll go. No, I bet it's my nail varnish, that. Christy. That's why I have that duster brush. So I can dust off with that instead of wafting my hand across. I always forget to use it. I don't think. No. Oh well, when the time comes to colour in this side, I'll just have to go over that with something, pencil or something, do something with the background. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to bring you up. Just why I lift this um, water off now. So I've given it a couple of minutes. It should be absolutely fine. Get that off there. Now I'm going to use this clean, make sure it's clean and there's no paint on it because if you use a dirty cloth and press down you're going to transfer whatever dirt and mucks on here onto your page. So it's important that it's clean and dry and you literally don't rub it, just dab and lift. And if you need to, you know, rearrange your cloth so that you're not putting the muck that's coming off back onto your page, you can sort of re refold your cloth so that you're not putting anything dirty onto the page but i think because i'm using such light delicate colors there's not much coming off anyway so let's 
does that bit do it? Let me just wipe. Don't know what that is. That's fluff. Fluff. I use fluff got on my page. See what I mean? <laughs> and I think that's everything lifted. Let me avert my eyes in a different direction to see if we've got it. Yeah, we got quite like that. That's quite nice. It's like a quite a nice subtle subtle colour for the background that but if I hold it up you can I hope you can see apart from the dirt what's transferred on it will come off <sighs> what is that um but I hope you can see the little tiny little dots that are on there what have come off and sort of created this little textured look and as it dries it will look better as well but yeah I quite like that quite like that so yeah this is going to be sort of pinks and then all the crystals i'm going to incorporate some of the green and purpley tones into the crystals and then we're going to have a light source from here um obviously i'm not going to do the light source yet because this has background has to be completely dry before i'm going in putting pencil over the top of it um but i'm going to stir on a bit of the seahorse I think yeah I think we'll start on a bit of the seahorse so I'm gonna get us zoomed in on this now so coming down <laughs> I think I picked out some colors I think I want to go quite bold on the seahorse I think I want quite bright pinks so I've literally picked out ooh, salmon 130 I've got light purple pink 128 and then I figured I would start with the pinks and then when I got to a, around here just past this Bella I thought it would be nice to blend it into a yellow tail so I've picked out two yellows I've picked out cadmium yellow 107 and dark chrome yellow 109 so yeah i'm hoping this transition works but heck we'll just have to see won't we <laughs> so i'm going to go in first with the salmon one three zero Don't know, we've still got some wet there why can i see it on my there we go i could see it on my phone but not in life so i think part of the seahorse is all this coral bits here are coming off of it so I'm going to do a light layer all over the seahorse with this salmon. I'm not going to bother about all these little dots that are on him. I'm not going to bother about those. I'm going to go straight over them. I'm not picking around going around them. Because that will be something that I'll probably put in dot, dot in detail and in with a white Posca pen right at the end. So I'm just going to cover all that up for now. That's not going to be a worry. The eye I'm just going to leave out for now. So I'm going to go around that. Not sure how I'm going to do the eye yet. Never done a seahorse eye before. Yeah, seahorse's eye before. Get your words out, Kirsty. Um, but yeah, this first layer is going to be really quite rough looking. That's all it is. It's just getting rid of the white space. It's my most favourite bit to do actually, because once you've done that, everything seems less daunting. And I've took out a lot of the white space with that background as well. There's not much for me to colour on this one, to be honest. I think that's why I probably picked it. I thought, come on, Kirsty. Nice, easy page, this one. <laughs> probably did dinner. Subconsciously. So I'm not going over any of the crystals with this pink. Just the coral bits. that are peeking up. I remember when I was looking for a reference to colour a seahorse. I've not actually looked for this page but when I was doing a previous page in Flowerscape and Paradise um, when I googled references there were so many different colours and different variations of seahorses it's incredible so colourful and beautiful as well but this one I just thought ah heck <laughs> it's more of a fantasy page this one so it can be whatever colour I want it to be we're not gonna stress over things being true to life 
Sometimes I like to, sometimes I think I, nah, just do your own thing on this one. So. <laughs> Thinking I should have picked out, I might pick out an orange as well actually, just to make that blend from pink to yellow a bit easier. I think if I do an orange in between, it will be nicer. So I'm going to go all the way down here, over all the sections. Every section is having a base of this colour. So all the middle bit as well. The only thing I'm not going over at the moment is the little fins. Because I've not decided what I'm going to do with them yet. I'm going to colour the whole body and tail. And then I'll decide what I'm doing with the fins. It's making me want to go back to the Blue Planet Aquarium again. It was lovely in there. The shark tunnel was the best. <laughs> Just feels so so strange being surrounded by all these sea creatures and sharks because there's literally sharks above your head behind the glass i'm not sure i'd go for one of the shark experiences mind i wouldn't want to get in there with them <laughs> no chance i'll stay behind the glass that'll do for me I am just trying to move the page up as I go along so that we're still in frame. If I go off at any point, I do apologise. It's tricky when you're trying to colour and look up at the same time to see if you're in frame. Making sure that you can see everything. So who's got this book already? Have you coloured a page already? Are you still deciding? on what page you want to colour like I say I think there's, there was definitely around six pages where I thought oh that's a really nice page this being one of them where I thought yeah I want to colour that but then the rest I'm not that not that head up about to be it doesn't excite me shall we say I got six pages where I thought, yeah, really lovely, and then the rest of the book didn't excite me. That's the best way I can describe it, I think. But it's because I think it's because we all like colouring different things as well, don't we? I prefer more. I do like pages like this, but then I don't like things that are too intricate with little tiny, teeny tiny details, which there's quite a lot of in this book of the teeny tiny little detailed things, um, which I just don't do. Um, I prefer a portrait, a good portrait. So some of the pages in here where they've got the women's heads on each page, I do like them. Um, I do like those ones. This, that's that covered. That's the base of that colour. And now I'm going to start going in with this really deep pink. And to be honest, I think I might mix a bit of this and this together in a certain area. Should I? don't know let's start with this pink light purple pink one to eight and see how we get along i'm just going to pick out random areas for this or should i go for the you know what i'm going to go for the top of the seahorse with this color so all along the top and and all the way sort of back here i'm going to do dirt pink going into a bit of orange let me find a nice orange what will blend nice See that orange orange glaze looks nice. Let me sharpen this. Du, du, du. I think my sharpener needs emptying because that didn't sound very healthy and that didn't sharpen very well. But it'll do. <laughs> so yeah. So I'm gonna start on the top of the little seahorse. The top of his little nose. So I'm going in with a hard pressure right at the top and then just slowly easing off into the rest because then we'll get a bit of that orange tone in i think i'm in frame aren't I? I keep worrying i'm not in frame it's because i'm zoomed in you see it's because i'm zooming in so all these corals 
I'm going to be bright pink. Lovely and bright pink. You might be thinking, well, what was the point in putting that base down if you're just going to go in with a hard pressure of this over the top of the top bits? But it's just my way. <laughs> It's just my way, I think we all have our own way of colouring, don't we? This is mine. Emergency vehicle, going past. It's for your full viewing pleasure. <laughs> That's the experience you get over here at Kirsty Colouring Sketch. An emergency vehicle. Enjoy. <laughs> You know what I've just had for? Well, I'd say it was like brunch because it weren't. It was too late for breakfast, sort of. Too early for dinner, so we call that brunch. Or elevens is, but it weren't eleven o'clock. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I had um sushi. So at my local supermarket, they sell a meal deal, and you can either pick a sandwich, a pasta, or like a sushi pack. I love it, me. I love sushi. So I got one of them. I've just had one of them before I came on here, so I'm all right. My belly's not rumbling at the moment. It might want a coffee, but it's not rumbling for food. <laughs> yeah, everyone pulls the face up at me when I say I like sushi or if I get sushi from shop. They all pull the face like I brought something uh, strange into the house. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be a really fun page, I think. Really fun, vibrant page. Just sense it. I just don't know what to do with those fins. I suppose when I've coloured the whole of the seahorse's body, then I'll probably be able to... I'll probably know what to do then, because I'll be able to see how much of each colour I've put down and... Work out what will be a nice complementary colour to use. Now I'm coming down here, I'm going to sort of spin my big round a little bit this way you might get a glow it might look a bit strange here you get a glow from the light onto the wax of the pencils and it makes it look horrific <laughs> i think this paper's still a bit wet though it's just not feeling like it's gripping the paper very well though i think it might be a bit wet This is what impatience gets you though. This is what being impatience gets you. Yeah, it's definitely still a bit damp that paper there. I mean it doesn't feel it to touch, but you can tell when I'm when you're trying to see that's the nasty glow you get. <laughs> yeah, you can definitely tell it's not going down the best yeah so if you do a background first let it fully dry guys fully dry give it a good hour give it an hour and then come back to your page and it'll be all right spin you around again I'm sorry if i'm making you seasick when your hand starts aching because you're leaning a certain way And then I'm trying to not get my big hand in the camera because I did that on my last colouring chat. I watched it back and I thought, because do your hand, big hands in the way, you're making it all, all the camera go blurry. What were you thinking? Let's just soften, soften that blend a bit there. Who celebrates Halloween? Who loves Halloween? I've seen all the little uh, bits in the shops 
You know when they start creeping little bits into the shops? So it won't be long before they get, they're setting up all the uh, costumes in the local supermarket. <laughs> I don't know if to stay, I can't remember. Normally we alternate years, so me and the kids will normally go trick or treat in one year and then the next year we'll stay indoors and just watch a movie or you know answer the door to other trick-or-treaters we'll normally like alternate it i can't rem for the life of me remember if we stayed home last year or if we went out honest truth so i can't remember <laughs> literally can't i'm gonna have to ask my partner but if, I, if i'm honest i really cannot be bothered going knocking on people's i hate it i hate knocking on people's doors i really do there's no worse than trick-or-treating i just really don't like it <laughs> so i might try and i might try and convince them like even if we didn't go trick-or-treating last year i might try and convince them we did <laughs> but yeah we went last year do not remember i don't remember i don't remember anything <laughs> but half the time we only end up getting like round the corner and then the littlest two will start whinging that the legs are tired anyway and asking, asking to come home and then the bigger ones are like no don't want to go yet <laughs> right i'm gonna stop there with the pink because this is where i'm gonna transition into some orange a little teeny tiny bit of orange and then yellow so i'm just gonna stop it there for now and i'm gonna try and i don't see i don't know what to do i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna put the, this dark pink around here as well down here just to there um just to here see you couldn't see then where that line stops i'm gonna go up here with the dark pink and around here so We'll just start it where these little things start and just blend it along there a little bit. Blend it up a little bit into his face and under his, a little bit of a shadow there under his, whatever that is. <laughs> what would you call it though on a seahorse? It's not a beak, it's not a nose. Is it a nose? Who knows? Who knows? Bun. I need to stop, don't I? Stop it because they not even funny. Not funny. It's my children will tell me. Everyone seems to like calling me weird. It's kind of followed me around from high school. From like being bullied caught like I don't I don't mind it mind it now i still don't like it but it doesn't like totally upset me now if someone says you oh you're weird but when i was in school sort of got bullied for that kind of thing for saying stuff like you know they used to call you a weird or weird weird or i have no idea why i used to keep myself to myself i had a small friend group that were it never did anything weird don't think anyway but got called that obviously i wear glasses and the time that i grew up as a child you used to get called speck of our eyes and all the rest of it or geek just because you had glasses on um so i had all that and then sort of my i nearly said my husband again we're not married guys we're not married why do i keep saying husband my partner sometimes if i'm being a bit I, i'm one of them people i saw a good meme about it actually I'm a major introvert, but when I'm around my partner, when I'm in my safe space in, in, in our home, nobody else can see, I go a bit crazy. And there was a really good meme on Instagram about it. Um, but yeah, I go a bit crazy and it, it calls me weird, not in a horrible way, but in a jokey like way, you know, it's not meaning anything negative by it. But because I got called that in a bad way in school, I kind of don't really like it. <laughs> And then the other day, one of my daughters, she's um, 10, she'll be 11 her next birthday. She stopped giving me cuddles and she always gives her dad on. 
I was like, you know, they always have the favourite parent, don't the kids? Some are my favourite, some are daddy's favourite. And she's daddy's favourite. Uh, she's, well, she, daddy, <laughs> daddy's her favourite, shall we say. Um, so she's always giving him hugs. I said, where's my hug? You never give me a cuddle anymore. You used to always cuddle me before you went into school. Because now she just runs off and goes straight into class. Where's my cuddle? Why do you not give me a cuddle? She went, because you're weird. I thought, what is it with people calling me weird? I don't understand. <laughs> I thought, are you rude? So yeah, I've learnt to, I've learnt to just not take offence to it anymore. <laughs> I've learnt to not take offence. So yeah, but apparently I'm weird. Don't know what they're talking about. Don't know what they're talking about. Is anybody else like that though? Like, you get called something, but not in a negative way now, but you you sort of had have a negative reaction to it because of something in the past. Has anybody else sort of got that? And it could be anything, couldn't it? Oh, my postman's just posted something through my door. No idea what it is. Right, I'm just going to blend... I'm going to pull some of this pink over that black line out so that it just merges into the colours that I'm going to be pulling through there. So it blends nicely. It's looking very terrible on camera at the minute. I promise you it won't look this terrible when I'm done. <laughs> Half of it's the glare from the lamp. On the wax of the pencil at a bad angle it just makes it look horrific but yeah that's where i'm at so far let me pull you up a bit so we can sort of see the this so far so now down here i'm gonna add a little bit of orange around the outside and then going into some yellows so the orange is the orange glaze orange glaze Bring you back down again. I'm just irritating you with that camera, aren't I? Oh, someone's... A, a comment's just popped up on one of my videos as well asking what tripod I use for my mobile phone. I forgot what it's called. I'm wondering if I can find it online because there's no, like... I don't think it says on the actual tripod, the brand of it. It's, um... No, it doesn't. But it's advertised all over Instagram. You might have seen it. It's like a white box and you fold it out and pull it up. Is it called Unique Unique or something? Or un it's UN something and it's got a Q in it. I'm sure of it. Might not be unique, but it's something like that. <laughs> I'll have to try and find out because I can't reply to this lady unless I find out. I'll be able to find it somehow. It's always cropping up on Instagram. Because they've sent quite a lot to influencers as well. I paid for mine and it wasn't the cheapest. But I know they do send them out to bigger influencers. Um, because they've got ones that hold iPads as well. That's a separate one to what I've got. And they do the ring lights as well. They do the big ring lights. So yeah. I'll try and find out. If you're watching, whoever was asking, I will try and find out for you. And then I'll reply. But I think it's because I said, I explained in my last video that I don't use nothing fancy to, you know, sort of film with. I just film with my mobile phone. I don't have a laptop. Don't have a fancy camera. Well, I have a camera, but from when the kids were little for taking pictures of the kids not really for recording it's not really a recording camera if I'm honest it's more of a just taking pictures camera right I'm going to stop this orange there now I'm going to sort of stop there at it and I'm going to get some yellows so I'm going to use my darker yellow dark chrome yellow 109 and we're going to blend some of this. Oh, big snap. <laughs> that actually created a little line on one of my crystals, but it's fine. 
that'll be uh, gone over with whatever bright colours I decide to use. It's not that much different from the orange glaze, that is it? The dark chrome. What is it? Dark chrome yellow, it's not that much different from the orange glaze. So I'm going to just change into cadmium yellow now, 107. And we'll just add some of that pop of real yellow there now. And the corals as well. There's something about pinks, oranges and yellows which just look so good together. Makes me all happy inside. <laughs> I'm gonna pull this yellow further out as well, further into the tail. I'm going to mix a bit of the darker pinks, so the light purple pink, one, two, eight. I nearly said one, two, three. I'm going to mix a little bit of it right at the tip of this tail. Just mix it in there. I don't know what it is. Right, after saying in a previous video that I think the Polychromos pencils adapt to any paper they're not working the best on here I thought at first I thought is it because the page is still damp but it's not this is completely dry this paper now but they aren't working the best on this paper I don't know why they're feeling like they're resisting do you know that sort of resistance you get where you're pushing hard on the page but the pigment isn't really laying down i don't know why that's happening but that never happens with my polychrome so what is this paper oh but yeah hmm it's a strange one right i'm going back in with the dark chrome yellow just to blend this pink bit out here I'm going to pull this dark chrome yellow all the way up to here. So where this orange started here, I'm going to pull it up to here, all through this bit. I'm blending into bits down here as well, just to make sure that we've got all that space covered. Yeah, they're just not... Just the best word I can use is resistance. It feels like there's a resistance against the pigment going down here. And I don't know why. Because the paper, mind you, the, the polychromos work well on all papers, that's what I mean. They, they seem to work well on smooth paper because I've used them in the Flowerscape book, which has a really smooth paper and they work well in there. They work well in books with texture. So I don't know what's going on here with this one. But this is not feeling easy to colour, put it that way. It's not feeling like an easy job. Right, I'm going to blend this sort of up to here, the dark chrome. Yeah, dark chrome yellow up to here. And then I'm going to get the really bright yellow around the front of the belly. So the really bright one, cadmium yellow 107, we're going to put around the front. Because we're going to have a bit of a light source. I'm even going over this pink here to create the light source from the lamp down here. Bit at the top bit here. All along there. Let's blend that out a little bit. I 
and I'm also going to use this colour for around the nose because we're still going to have some light from here sort of around the nose area so I'm going to underneath definitely there I'm going to pull a bit of it up around the nose area that'll do so going back to the dark chrome yellow 109 I'm just going to go around the back of here just to really burnish all this colour now you really get into all those bits of white that we've missed looking quite nice and I'm going to go up all the back of here so I'm just going to come up a little bit with this colour and then I'm going to switch to the orange glaze so I'm going to switch to the orange glaze now 113 I'm going to take the rest of this colour up the back blending it into the pink they blend so well together pinks and oranges they're just the best Pinks and oranges, look at that. Love it. Just works so well. we go and I'm gonna bring it all the way up here onto the top of the head here and I'm gonna stop the with that one I think I'm going to stop there and I'm going to blend the rest so the little bit that we've got in between these lines here I'm going to blend with the dark chrome yellow I'm going to pop a bit of that orange glaze though on this bottom. See how there's this top sort of lid above the eye and a bottom lid? I'm going to put a bit of this on the bottom one just so it doesn't get lost. So it's a bit more defined. And then I'll use the dirt chrome just to blend that into the nose. bit better there there we go then I'm going to use this dark chrome still to just do the bits that we've got left here so I'm going to come in here with this dark chrome yellow it's dark chrome yellow isn't it yep dark chrome yellow 109 bring that up there A little bit from behind there. Now what I'm going to do is use the lightest pink that we put down at the very start. So the very light pink we use, the Salmon 130. And I'm going to go in with a hard pressure here now. Because I want to keep some of this pink and I want to pull that through the dark chrome yellow as well pull it through and blend that a bit so it's looking a bit like a uh, much what do you call them what are they called oh them sweets what were them sweets called rhubarb and custard were they <laughs> so it looks a bit like rhubarb and custard <laughs> That 
that's really lovely colour. Really lovely. And you can use this colour to just touch anything up. Anything you feel like needs blending a bit more. Needs a bit more colour through it. Let's just see what we've got down here going on. Blend a bit more down there. Blend out this pink here. I'm tweaking now, guys. Tweaking. I think she's tweaking. She's tweaking. Let me zoom out. I might actually zoom in on my phone as well. Let me. There I am. There we go. So, this is what we've got so far. Quite like this. Quite like those colours. So. Mm, fins, 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 fins. <sighs> I, don't, I just don't know what to colour, to colour to go for. I'm so indecisive as well. Like, I don't know whether to go for something totally contrasting. So maybe go and bring in some um, sort of teals. You know, really quite pale teal colours. Do you think that'd be nice? some teals or some purples or teal and purple together because they they make a nice mix as well yeah why not i'm gonna go teal and like a lilac like a really light let me see where all my colors are at i had a lot of these colors out on my desk as well the other day when i was doing a page i can't remember that's quite a nice one cobalt green but is that more no that is quite a nice color and then like a really pale, pale purple. I don't know where my light magenta pencil's gone. Where's my light magenta pencil? Oh, there's a little pencil here as well. Oh, that's blue. Well, it says turquoise, but it looks more blue to me, that one. Where's that one? It's more green. Hmm. Eek. Where's my light magenta pencil gone? If I've lost that pencil. <laughs> it's a really tiny one as well. Like, it's really, really teeny tiny. I'll be gutted if I've lost that somewhere. It was definitely, definitely on my desk the other day. You know what? It's just disappeared. It's disappeared. Oh, never mind. We'll just use the, um, we'll use this one. This one's Light Red Violet 135. It's a really nice one as well. And we'll go with cobalt green with it, I think. So let's see how this works out. <laughs> so I'm going to start off with the purple first. Um, no, let's bring you down again. Stupid camera. <laughs> I cannot get good camera angles on it. it. Really. I'm going to start on the edges with the purple. So right on the tip, I am going in with a medium to hard pressure here. And then I'm just going to... You know, lay off the pressure and go into a light sort of layer there. Anything in between, like these little bits, these little lines that are going in between. I'm going to do all that with like my gel pens, glitter gel pens, because it's too delicate to be going in with the, in there with pencils and stuff. Right, so now I'm going to go in with this cobalt green 156. And let's see if we can blend that down. Oh, it's quite dark though, isn't it? I feel like we need another light colour there. So I might just add this to there and leave leave a bit. I feel like we need a lighter shade. That's a nice sort of a blending colour, merging colour. Yeah, we'll have to sharpen this and go for this, I think. Light cobalt turquoise. Let me sharpen it. It's tiny, that pencil as well. You can tell I use my polychrome most a lot because a lot of them are just really wearing down now. So that wasn't really much lighter, if I'm honest. I think I was looking for something really, really pale. <laughs> this didn't happen. Oh, we'll put in some dotting detail in on there later. It'll look fine. <laughs> there we go. So I'm going to do the same on this one as well. 
So darker purple on the edges. Don't have to be too precise with this because you're all blending the colours all together. You're not going to see any of these harsh lines. Now in with the cobalt green. That blends really nice with that purple actually. It's a really nice blend. I'm just going to finish this one fin and then we'll have to call it a video because I think we're running into the hour mark now and it's not going to export for me if I go any longer. There we go. Oh, I'm loving that. I'm loving that contrast. Take you back down. I like it. Let me move out light. I'm sort of blocking my own light here. But there we go. That's what we've got so far. I feel like I've achieved a lot this morning. <laughs> I feel like I've worked quicker than I normally do. So we've done the background distress ink, threw on some water, lifted up that colour. And then we've gone in on the seahorse, oranges, yellows, pinks, and then teals and purples for the fins. This fin is going to be the same as this one. And then all these little diddy bits are going to be gel pen detailing in. Um, if you want me to come back on another video and show how I sort of do a little bit of a light source around here, um, drop me a comment down below and I will do that. Um, hope you enjoyed the video please do hit the thumbs up subscribe if you're new and i will see you in the next one